Hello guys, welcome back to the video updates. It's Shade. Today's video is going to answer a question that we received recently. It's a question that comes up quite a bit because people are, it comes up quite a bit because people have a misconception about how things actually work with real property. Um, so let's go over the question really quickly and then try to clarify once and for all how the process would look in a specific type of situation. So the situation I'm talking about in this video is when two people acquired property together because they were married, but one of the spouses actually has children from a previous relationship or just while you were married, but they just happened to have a child, right? That happens in real life. So the question that we get a lot is from the surviving spouse once one of them passes away. And typically they pass away unexpectedly or maybe not so unexpectedly, but people, but because of the misguided belief of the spouses, they never take care of the paperwork correctly while that person is still alive. So what do I mean by that? When real estate is owned jointly and it could be considered marital property in a lot of states or if you want to you can call it community property however once somebody dies without a will things look differently if one of the spouses should die without a will then the law says we have to follow some default rules right and surprisingly enough the rules are not always in favor of the surviving spouse. And so let me explain why. In the state of Texas, for example, if one of the spouses passes away in the specific situation where there are children from a different relationship, right? So the person that passes away had kids from a previous marriage or just from a previous relationship or from a side relationship while they were still married. Um, so in that scenario that person has children that might be from this particular marriage to the surviving spouse and also other children and so texas state law says that the surviving spouse only gets his or her share of the property which is 50 percent and then the remaining 50 percent would go to all of the children of that deceased spouse contrary to popular belief the surviving spouse unfortunately does not get the other half of the property so the surviving spouse cannot just take his or her name and put it on 100 percent of the title um, so we get this question a lot so i wanted to do a quick video to address that while your spouse is still alive and healthy and of clear mind that is the best time to do a will if you would like to i think that it's important to do a will especially if you already have kids or if you have real estate or significant assets right so you should always consider doing a will it's not that difficult to get a lawyer to put that together these days and even if you don't want a lawyer to put it together they have some companies that could at least give you some forms that you could use if you needed to but we always suggest to have a lawyer to review it to make sure everything says what you think you're trying to do. And then if you don't have a will yet or you're not yet convinced that you want to do a will, maybe due to religious reasons or cultural reasons, the topic is a little bit too morbid or maybe the timing is just not right for you at the moment. There is another thing that you could do with real estate in a lot of the states okay a lot of states would allow you to do a survivorship agreement there is something else that you could actually do to protect yourself as a surviving spouse or to protect your surviving spouse whichever one of you survives the other one so in most states you're allowed to have a survivorship agreement of some sort or you could also have a transfer upon death deed so the transfer upon death deed is very similar to a survivorship agreement you could have it done mirror image meaning that if mr smith will pass away first then mrs smith will get 100 percent of the real estate even if mr smith has children from a prior marriage or children outside of the current marriage right so that protects the surviving spouse and vice versa if mrs smith would die first 
then all of the property 100% would go to Mr. Smith. So that's the best way, in my opinion, to try to cover yourself. If you really, really love your spouse and you really want that spouse to be the one to get the house, right? Or the real estate, whatever it is. If that's your true in intention, then you should commit to paper what your intention is so that the state of Texas or any other random state legislators don't tell you what happens to your property. You want to have that control while you're alive because once you pass away, surprisingly, the result might not be what you thought it would be or what you believed that it would be. And so we're getting a lot of these types of questions and I think it's important that you keep that in mind. If there are kids from different relationships, it changes everything. Even if there are no kids from different relationships that you know about, there might be kids from a different relationship that you just never knew about. I've had that happen a lot of times. So this is real life, you know, humans are humans. We do what we do and things happen. So protect yourself, get a will done, make sure you're named in the will as the person to inherit the property if something should happen to your spouse. And if it's your intention that you would also do the same for your spouse. And if you don't want to do a will yet, or you just aren't yet ready to consult with a lawyer on that because you have a lot of other things that you want to put in your will, you could still do that survivorship agreement or you could do a transfer on death deed. And check with a lawyer in your state for all of the laws, but you don't want to leave the decision to your state to do things with your property that you really wouldn't have done if you were alive. Um, so that's my um, video for you for today. And if you have questions specifically, you can let us know. And it's just always a shocker to people because they accidentally end up owning property with their stepkids that they've never talked to for in forever. Or they just happen to now co-own property with stepchildren that they don't like or that don't like them. And they have an intention to sell the property and the stepkids don't want to sell or the stepkids want to sell right away and you don't want to sell. So that's where things get very complicated. You should take care of it before you get to that point. All right, so that's my quick video for you. Hopefully it's helpful. If you like the channel, remember to subscribe so that you can continue to get notifications of our future videos. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll talk to you next time.